Charlotte, she's a seamstress now. Swell it up, I don't reckon it's broke up, but it is swelled to the point she ain't able to labor. It is kind of productive matter. He is George Washington's valet. And so this space also gives you an opportunity to compare and contrast quality of life. The wealth of the gentry class, the general's mansion, regular everyday living, an entire Virginia family, husband, wife, and several children will be living in a space like this. Our last stop that you can compare and contrast, I don't even call it my home. It's just the place I find my rest, the barracks, the slave quarters. This way, if you will. These are the barracks. You to live where you work on plantation. That is the same. You work on this farm, you live on this farm. Remember, there's five farms. 306, 17 people will be spread out all over the 8,000 acre plantation. Most of us is going to be living in the shacks that don't even look as well as this. Mostly going to be the women and children who work out in the fields. The men are the ones who have the trades, the skilled labors. And so during the six day work week, most of them are going to be on Mansion House Farm. And during the six-day work week, they ain't allowed to raise their children or see their loving wives. Because this is where they're supposed to stay until Sunday. It's a 10 bunk bedroom with 20 to 30 men come to sleep and live. Bed made out of straw over there. Blanket. Two to three till bed at time. When I'm relieved of my duty is about 9 to 10 of the clock, the room I already fill up with men. Sometime I'll sleep on the bed, sometime I won't. This gives you a picture of the lives we live. Just the living condition alone. There's the mansion to compare and contrast. The overseer's quarters to compare and contrast. And here. And those other two, at least they are able to choose. This is where we are required to live. So you could always meet the family if they were close by? Five miles away, two hour walk by foot. Oh, Ain't no way close by at all. Yeah. You'll find that um, there's this thing of called night walking, which sounds like what your suggestion, which is if you want to see your wife and child for whatever reason, you slip away at night. <laughs> Washington don't like for this to happen, because that means you come back the next day, you just right. tired from your labors. Mm. Strength was not bad, very good. This is very good. The structure. Two years. Two hundred years. I agree. This is well the structure of the building. Very I do agree. Good. Brick floor, brick wall, wood ceiling. Ten bunk beds. It is built to the letter, to the detail of a military style bunk bedroom. Mm -hmm. So the structure is quite sound. But when you put twenty to thirty men in here against their will, mm -hmm. it changes things very fast. Indeed. Please, let's exit outside. Sorry, y'all only been in here for two, three minutes. I'm sure y'all ain't comfortable with it. Imagine if this is where you live. Let us put some closing remarks on this conversation, ladies and gentlemen. So you all were able to, to walk a bit in my shoes, to see my life, to see Washington as I see him through, through my eyes. And you'll find, please, ma'am, this way. Sorry. Oh, you're quite all right. Come on, girl. You'll find that we don't need to argue about slavery being right and wrong. Everybody, if you got some moral compass in you, know it ain't well at all. 
know that even here at Washington Plantation, I have yet to meet, to meet a guest who will be willing to sacrifice their life, the condition, the quality, no matter how hard or whatever. And no matter how much they love and appreciate General Washington, I ain't yet to meet a sane individual who's going to say, I'll be one of Washington's slaves to relinquish your freedom, your ability to choose and life. Another man's will and will controls you, his temperament, you must. This ain't even right for humanity. And this is where you find me, living this life. Serving with a man who talked about freedom and justice. A man who, when he was younger, slavery was everyday business, nothing for him to think twice about. Then he fought in the war, the war for freedom and independence. So the question come up, can Washington truly be a freedom fighter if he holds people in forced labor and bondage against his will? He begun to be a man in conflict, a man divided. He will have conversation with abolition. He will consider, as I share in this conversation, the economic, the business aspect of slavery and how it is not even sound, as well as the moral aspect. He say, and I quote, there is no man greater than I who wish for the slow, sure, and gradual abolition of slavery by imperceptible degree. But remember, everything I share with y'all is the ongoings of our daily lives, even now, after the presidency. Because that same man who says, I wish for abolition, is the same man who says, and I quote, I will intentionally deceive the slaves, for the temptation of freedom is far too great. The idea of the ideals of abolition are in opposition to the quality condition. What does it mean to be a Virginia, Virginia gentleman in this 18th century? The comfort and wealth, prestige, position. And he will carry on. He is not wantonly cruel, as I say, but he ain't nice to us either because we ain't getting no pay. He is an average Virginia slave owner. And so everything that happened, you can imagine in slavery has occurred on the very land you come to visit. To date, 1798, this land been a plantation all the way from great-grandfather John Washington. That's over 124 some odd years. Now, Washington will continue to wrestle with these notions of abolition and comfort. And so, to remedy this after the American presidency, he will redraft his will to contend in death the scenario he will wrestle with during his life. At the time he died, he said he's going to free one slave at that time. My predecessor, William Lee, who fought during the war, will go on to state remain in Washington slave, number 122, be set free whensoever Lady Washington passed away. Don't wish for his wife to be without the life she's accustomed to, and he's looking to delay an inevitable tragedy that will occur as well. The 41 slaves rented from Mrs. French, we get returned to her. And the dial slays our scenario. We go from bad to worse. 153 people. One of the hardest things for us to deal with as a people is separation. For better or worse, this is our home, our land. But to be separated from your, your wife, your husband, your children, your loved ones, that is the hardest burden to bear. And so the 153 dial slaves will be divided up among the four grandchildren from Lady Washington first marriage. I am one of the dial slaves on this plantation. This is the law. This is what the law has for me. So what keeps me going? How do I maintain in this world where the color of my skin is <coughs> determining my fate? No matter how hard my contribution is to the general, no matter how dutiful I am to him, still to be treated like such in a manner no one wants to be treated. I've been with Washington. I've seen something, something that gave me a flicker of hope for this nation, a brief bit of light. Y'all familiar with the American Declaration of Independence? I've seen it myself with my own eyes. You know, with John Hancock, big old handwriting. <laughs> we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, and ladies of course, are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. My belief is when this country ever truly live up to these lofty, most beautiful ideals, 
that this country can truly become what it ever ought to be, live up to its destiny, to be a beacon of hope and light, not just for the nation and its people, but to be a, a guiding path in the upcoming darkness, our great calling, our duty to the entire world. My query is, which generation is going to get it right? And so with that, this is where I leave you all. You've seen my life. You've seen the general through my eyes. You all take care of me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, if you all have any lingering queries, I'm at your service. I will take my leave slowly. <laughs> but um, our time officially is concluded. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.